Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be making, wait for it, Scamorza. So I've got this hanging on a hook for a reason because that's how it's drying. Uh, Scamorza is an Italian cheese uh, and it is like a ripened mozzarella if that makes sense. So these little beauties have been hanging here for about a week now. They've got a firmish sort of rind. Scamorza is a, I'll just get this hook out of the way. Scamorza is a pasta falata cheese, so it's a stretchy curd cheese. And it is very easy to make. Remember how I had trouble back in the mozzarella video, the mozzarella de buffalo, uh, where it took like six hours to get the acidity right for the curds before I could put it into hot water and stretch it. Well, I did some more experimentation with this recipe, very similar to the mozzarella de buffalo, except Scamorza uses cow's milk. Uh, and I managed to uh, quicken the pace of the cheese make down to four hours. And I was finished this by midnight. So I started about 11 a.m. Uh, making this and I was finished to this stage wrapped with the little um, strings um, by uh, 11 p.m. So that was good. There were, you know, I didn't have to do a lot in between when I was waiting. There's lots of waiting time, a little bit of stirring, not much. So a great little cheese to make. Now it's ready in two weeks, but it's starting to crack. Let me just, I can see this one here. Getting a little bit of a crack here. Uh, as it dries out, I didn't fold the curds over properly, obviously. Um, and a little bit of a thing going on here. But uh, these are supposed to be ready in two weeks. Uh, so I might just try them now. I'll try one now and I'll age the other one out. The one that hasn't got as many cracks, which is the bottom one. So uh, before I do that, though, uh, I will show you how I made Scamorza. So start off by sanitizing all of your equipment and lay it on a nice clean tea towel. So Scamorza ingredients are five liters or 1.3 gallons of cow's milk. I'm using pasteurized and unhomogenized milk. One sixteenth of a teaspoon of MA11 or MO30 mesophilic culture. One sixteenth of a teaspoon of MOT92 thermophilic culture or ThermoB. One quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 milliliters of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. One quarter of a teaspoon or 1.25 milliliters of single strength rennet that is diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. And a cool 18% brine solution. So once you've got your milk in your pot and you've got the heat that you've chosen to use, then cover it up and allow it to come up to temperature. So the temperature for the milk is 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just stirring the cream back in there. And yeah, it looks pretty good, spot on. I'm ready to proceed to the next step. So first of all, add the mesophilic starter culture. Just sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. And then add the thermophilic starter culture. Sprinkle that over the top. Then pop the lid back on and allow the cultures to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, stir the cultures into the milk. There we go, pop the lid back on and now we're going to allow the milk to acidify or ripen for one hour. So after one hour, I'm going to stir any cream that's floated to the top back into the milk again. Just check the temperature, yep, still spot on. Gotta love that precision cooker. And add the calcium chloride solution and give it a good stir. 
this adds back any soluble calcium. It helps the milk set a better curd when using pasteurized milk. So now we're going to add the rennet. Just pour that in and stir for no more than one minute. So distill the milk, pop the lid back on, and we're going to allow that to coagulate or set for 45 minutes. So after 45 minutes, we're now going to check for a clean break. I'm just putting my knife in, turning it, and if it looks like a nice clean split, then absolutely perfect, go on to the next stage and cut the curds into eight millimeter or one third of an inch cubes. Just do it as best you can. I use my curd cutter to cut the horizontals and my curd knife to do the vertical cuts. There we go. Now pop the lid on and allow the curds to heal for five minutes. So five minutes later, a little bit of whey has been expelled. So now we're going to raise the temperature of the curds to 39 degrees Celsius or 102.2 Fahrenheit over the period of 45 minutes and stirring continuously. Having a bit of trouble doing a one-handed timer there. There we go. Nice. So I set my precision cooker to the, the right temperature and 45 minutes later you'll see the curds have shrunk a fair bit about the size of a navy bean now and a lot of whey has been expelled. So just check the temperature make sure it's spot on should be 39 celsius or 102.2 and a little bit over but that's fine. So allow the curds to settle and hold the temperature for 30 minutes. This will increase the acidity of the curds. So I'm just stopping the precision cooker there now, removing from the heat. Putting that out the way for the moment. Taking the water out and removing my trivet that was underneath the pot. I'm going to transfer the curds into a cheesecloth lined colander and I've got a pot underneath that because I'm going to need the whey to help with further acidification of the curd. So plop the lump of curds that's formed at the bottom, just cover that up, and we're going to allow it to drain for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes later, you've got a curd slab. So cut that into quarters, just using a curd knife. Don't apply too much pressure, you'll cut through the cloth. There we go, got our quarters. Now pop the quarters back into the pot that they originally came from. There we go. Just get rid of the cheesecloth and the colander. So pour enough whey over the top of the curds just to cover them and we're going to allow them to acidify for four hours. Now the target pH we're aiming for is between 5.3 and 5 to get a good curd stretch. So we're gonna keep the curds warm at 36 to 38 Celsius or 97 to 100 Fahrenheit uh, over that four hours and this will help it acidify quite rapidly as the starter cultures do their thing and convert the lactose into lactic acid. So there's the four hours on the timer. You can go and do some gardening or something. Now there's a big warning here, make sure you wear thick rubber gloves when handling the hot curds during the stretching phase or you will burn yourself. Trust me, I know these things. So in a large bowl, place a small piece of curds and add hot water. That is about 71 Celsius or 160 Fahrenheit. Certainly enough to scald yourself. So I boil the kettle and let it cool down for a few minutes so it comes down in temperature. And you can see I've cut a little piece off there and I poured the hot water over the top. And now I'm just gonna work it to see if it stretches. So this is just a little test. 
to see if we've hit the right pH. I'm not using any pH meters or anything like that at the moment. pH meters were never used back in the olden days. So this little test is perfect. So we've got a perfect stretch there. So we're ready to stretch the rest of the curds into our skimorza. Now, if your curds don't stretch like this, then just allow them to wait underneath the whey uh, at the same temperature for another one to two hours. And you can test it at one hour and it should stretch. And as I mentioned, the target pH is between 5.3 and 5.0 if you do have a pH meter. Now I'm cutting up two of the slabs, two of the quarters into fingers and popping that into my large bowl there. And then I'm going to put some more hot water on top. Before I do that, I'm going to fill a second bowl with iced water. So it's just cold water out of the tap. And then I'm going to put some, just some ice, handful of ice in there. You don't need too much. Okay, so putting my rubber glove back on again, I'm going to add more hot water to the curds just to get the temperature up. So begin to stretch the curds until they have a shiny and smooth surface. They'll all come together quite well if the curds is at the right pH. So as you can see, they stretch very well. So I'm just making sure I'm getting a shiny surface, which I am, and just stretching a little bit more. And now I'm going to form the shape of the skimorza. So it's a pear shape uh, with a little bit of a neck so you can hang it with a string. So I'm just shaping that roughly into a pear shape. You don't have to be particularly accurate with the shape of it as long as it's got a little neck so it can hang and a big bulbous bottom. There we go. Very nice. So just roll it in your hands until you get a smooth round bottom. So then you can place it in the cold water for 15 minutes to let it firm up and it won't stretch any further. So repeat the process with the next two quarters of the curds, just cut them up into fingers. And bring them together as one solid mass. So the reason you cut them up into fingers to start with is because they have a larger surface area and they heat up quicker that way. And then you can combine them into the single mass of curd or the ball of curd. If you need more hot water, then don't hesitate to tip out the old stuff and put in some fresh hot water. That way it's easier to work the curds. Just letting it warm up a little bit there. There we go, get a good stretch. So fold it a few times, give it a big stretch. And then form it into the shape, into the pear shape again. So I found with the five litres of milk, I got two decent sized skimorses. And you can see there it is, there's the pear shape with a neck. Very nice. Let's roughly roll it into, a, into the pear shape with a little neck and then place it into the ice water. There we go, we have our two skimorses, excellent. So you can remove the gloves. And I'm just setting a timer to remind myself to take those out of the cold water. So the next stage is to make up a brine, two litres of water and 450 grams of salt. That's an 18% saturation. And pop the two skimorses into the brine solution. They will definitely float. We're going to brine the skimorza for six hours using this recipe. I found that gives a good salt saturation into the two cheeses. So six hours later, it's going to remove the two cheeses from the brine. Now we're going to hang them up now. So I've tied two bits of twine. This is salami twine with a reef knot. And then I've just created a loop and loop it over the neck. 
and then hang each cheese with the twine. Now, if you didn't see that correctly, then I'll show you closer up later on in the video how to make these little loops. Very simple. So hanging the first one up, then making a loop with this twine, popping it over the top of the neck of the skimorza, and we're gonna hang this one up. Now I made sure that the two loops were different lengths because when you hang the cheese for the two weeks, make sure that they're not touching or they will deform in shape. So I've just got them hanging over a pot freshly out of the brine. They will drip a little bit. I've just got a stainless steel hook and hanging that off a knob in the kitchen. They're not very heavy at all. So we're gonna hang in a draft free place for one to two weeks to mature and you'll find that it creates a rind on the outside. There's the little hook and the little loop over the neck very cool indeed so back to gav for more on the maturation for the scamorza so there you go i've quickened up the recipe uh made it faster which is great everybody needs a faster recipe uh, nobody's got time to hang around and wait for curds to become acidic enough to stretch them but yeah great little stretch i didn't stretch it too much because uh, apparently you're not supposed to and we've got a lovely little scamorza. What I love is this little nook on the neck where it's hung. Now, very easy, and I probably didn't show this as well in the, the tutorial part. All this is is a loop of twine. This is a natural twine. This is used usually for um, making salamis and stuff. Um, so food grade, no problems at all. So I just did a reef knot here, just on this bit here. And all you have to do is you do a loop, so you push the back through there. So we've got a nice little double loop. Whoops, stay there. So we've got a double loop now. It's not like magic trick or anything. Hook it over the neck of the cheese. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. And we're all done. And that's how you hang it. And then hang it on the hook. Um, somewhere that's uh, not too dry. You can put these into, you know, if you've uh, got your cheese cave, you can put it in your cheese cave. The rind dries out fairly quickly, within about two or three days anyway. Um, and you can keep the humidity up if you want. Um, there's no mould on this at all because it's got, you know, nice firm skin. It's not too firm, I can still press into it a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that's how you ripen it. Just hang it somewhere. So let's have a look at the insides of the scamorza. Like I said, it's just like a ripened mozzarella. Uh, there's no discoloring on the outside. This has been hanging there for about, about a week. Um, so, should be able to cut into it fairly easy. Oh, there you go. Mmm, nice. So as you can see there, we've got some little, it looks like rings and stuff. That's where I stretched the curd. Um, and yeah, it looks really cool. So a little bit of an air bubble in there, but you'll get that because, you know, the way you stretch the curds, uh, it's going to have an air bubble. So that's scamorza cut in half. A little bit firm. It smells, well, it smells quite nice. Um, a bit like, um, oh, hard to describe, a bit like uh, provolone. Uh, or provolone, depends on how you want to say it. Let's cut a piece off for tastings. There we go. Bit of an air bubble there too. You'll get air bubbles through this because of the way you, you, you stretch the cheese. So let's make it pretty, shall we, for the cameras? Come on, come on, Scamorza, you can be pretty. <laughs> there we go. Mmm. Oh, that's salted just right. Mmm, that's really good. Good as me. Such a fresh cheese too. There's the, the milkiness that you would normally get from mozzarella. It's got a little bit of extra something. Um, a good uh, umami flavour. Yeah, that's what it is. It does actually taste a fair bit like uh, provolone. Now, provolone's aged a lot longer than this. This has only been aged for a week, as I mentioned, but um, it, it tastes really nice. 
Um, you could cut the rind off if you wanted to, a little bit firm. Let's just try the inside. I'm just going to peel that off a little bit. It's probably criminal. Uh, now, scamorza can be smoked. Uh, there are smoked versions as well as the, just the fresh ones. So there's the rind off. Uh, and I dare say that it adds something to the flavour as well. Uh, I don't know how deep the smoke would penetrate into the cheese because, you know, this is fairly firm. Uh, it gets smoked when it's fresh, obviously. It's come, you know, you've stretched it and hung it for a day. I was in two minds. I was thinking of uh, getting some... I've got some liquid smoke in the cupboard and what you could do is uh, coat it in liquid smoke uh, and then let it dry. And I think that would add a little bit of a smoky flavour if you're looking for that sort of uh, effect for the cheese. Anyway, so this has no rind now. Hmm, a lot smoother. Oh, the flavour intensity is really strong. Get that lovely milky flavour with the umami then kicks in. A little bit of saltiness. Absolutely perfect. Great cheese. So if you haven't tried scamorza before or something like provolone, uh, which is a ripened mozzarella basically, um, then you've got to give it a go. It really, this is so good. As you can tell because I can't stop eating it. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. Anyway, that's scamorza. Uh, it's like a ripened mozzarella. This one was made with cow's milk. Most scamorzas are made with cow's milk. There is a buffalo version, I think. Uh, scamorza de buffalo. And I think there is also a PDO or DOP or AOC version um, that is in Italy. So this is not that. This is just Gab's version of a ripened mozzarella and it's made with cow's milk. Really nice, got to give it a go. Uh, don't be scared of the pasta falada bit, the stretchy bit. It was very simple this time. I think this recipe we've nearly, well, nearly, I have, as far as I'm concerned, perfected uh, the acidification of the curds for stretching the cheese. So follow this recipe and you'll have no problems making scamorza whatsoever. Uh, you can get the ingredients, the cultures, the rennet, uh, and some of the equipment over at Little Green Workshops. Don't forget that we've got a shop. We ship uh, internationally, so worldwide, shipping to uh, most countries. It's been great having you uh, watch the video today. If you got this far, then you're obviously very keen. So don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Leave a comment down below uh, if you've tried Scamorza before or you've tried to make it. And how did it turn out for you? Anyway, thank you for watching Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.